Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. So a few months ago, I made a video covering the content in Bloons TD6, and there, many of you expressed your interest in seeing the rest of the TD games in the series covered, so alas, here we are. In this video, we'll be diving into the rest of the mainline Bloons TD game, so 1 all the way through 5. So grab your darts and pop that like button below, let's check out some more Bloons TD Lost Bits. Alright, so let's of course kick things off with the Bloon TD game that started it all way back in 2007, the original Bloons Tower Defense. Being mostly older and more simple Flash games, there's not nearly as much stuff left over in the earlier games, but still a few cool things of note. And to start off on a high note, the first game here actually has an unused tower. And there's also a leftover unused graphic for it, where we can see it appears as a simple glowing green orb. However, it looks like this is probably just a placeholder graphic, as this tower is titled the Spiky Ball Tower, and this orb doesn't really seem to fit that name, I think. These towers would have cost $500, would have had a range of 85, or right between that of the Tack Shooter and Dart Monkey, and it would have had an attack rate of 130, a shoot power of 12, and maximum pierce power of 2. What's extra cool is that there's actually also leftover functionality for this tower, and it can even still be restored in the game. And if you were expecting the Spiky Ball Tower to do anything else besides shoot spiky balls, you'll be quite disappointed as that's exactly what it does, both vertically and horizontally. Now, unfortunately, it isn't clear why this Spiky Ball Tower was never finalized for full implementation. Then this first game also has one more unused graphic, but unfortunately it isn't very interesting as it's just a simple grey rectangle. Although not 100% clear, based on its aspect ratio, it's thought that this graphic may have served as a size template for the balloon graphics made for the game. And lastly for the first game here are actually a pair of text strings that go unused. The first of these is for a loading screen, and then secondly we have one of those test text strings that has no problem telling us exactly what it is. I always love seeing these text tests. Now next, we of course have Bloons Tower Defense 2, and unfortunately, the only two documented bits of unused content here are things we already saw in the first game, which I guess makes sense since they probably kept a lot of the coding the same. Well, on the other hand, although the Spiky Ball Tower graphic again returns unused in the sequel here, it doesn't have its leftover functionality anymore, as coding for it appears to have been removed. And then the only other thing for us here is the same test text string from before, so if you were missing it already, here you go. And you know what? I'm just gonna keep this on screen here as we transition to Bloons Tower Defense 3, as wouldn't you know it, this makes a return for the third game in a row. But thankfully, this isn't the only unused bit of text this time, as there's also what looks to be a placeholder text string for a tower unit which, surprisingly, has a bad word in it. It reads as follows. This is a description of the tower and what it does. It also has info about upgrades and shit. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Then moving on to the unused graphics side of things, would you be surprised to hear that the unused Spiky Ball Tower graphic also returns for the third game in a row? No? Didn't think so. But to add to it this time, we also have three of these red squares which are apparently hidden off screen with the words sound effects above them, as well as an unused graphic of what appears to have been meant for an FPS counter in the game. And finally, although not completely unused, parts of the Super Monkey from the game's intro are normally obscured, but thankfully we have the full graphics of all of the parts, so if you were ever wondering what the graphics looked like in full, like the monkey's tail here, there you go. Now next up we got 2009's Bloons TD4, where the titles finally dropped the Tower Defense moniker, since apparently the name of a game genre is something that can be copywritten. Anyways, as the games got more and more advanced, the more and more stuff was left over unused, so let's check it out. To start things off here, the Spiky Ball Tower graphic again returns for one last hurrah in the fourth game as well. This is, however, the last time this graphic appears here, but you gotta hand it to it, it certainly had a good run. Other normally unused graphics include this one, known simply as Sprite1173, that just says hide, which currently has an unknown purpose. There is an early version of the graphic for the main menu that would lead players to play Bloons TD5, that apparently was once used before being updated with a newer graphic. 
And then next, there are also leftover graphics from BTD3 for animations of the Spike Pulse Tower as well as its multi-shot upgraded version. Much like the rest of the towers, the graphics for these units were redone for this game, so perhaps these BTD3 leftovers were originally used as placeholders while the new graphics were finalized. Then we also have a set of unused graphics meant for when a player would hover their mouse over each of the towers on the sidebar in a game. And these also appear to reveal early UI graphics for the towers, and it's sort of strange that no different mouse rollover graphics were implemented at all in this game, especially considering that these are still left in the game. Then moving on, we have some simple unused square graphics in white, green, as well as red. And these are actually all part of a scrapped version of a track editor that was meant to be included directly in this game rather than part of a separate application as ultimately it was released. The white squares would make up the track editor default workspace, the green ones would be used for where the balloons would enter the maps, and then on the flip side, the red ones would be used for the balloon path exits. We also got these early work in progress screenshots of the track editor as was planned to be introduced in this game, and here we can see early graphics of what looks like pathing for the balloons as well as these brown tiles, which I'm not sure exactly what they could be, but just based on what tiles were seen in the final version of the track editor, these may have just been a placeholder for the water tiles. We can also see early placement of a screen that would feature popular tracks as well as ones made by the player, and then also there's this text that gets cut off which mentions that each track in the player's level would have to have… something. And once again, based on the final version, it looks like this was supposed to say that each track was to have a start, an end, and only 10 or less intersection tiles. And while on the topic of text stuff, this game has a few of those unused too. This includes text for a button that would have been used to clear cookies within the game, text for unlocking the dartling gunner which normally isn't seen as it gets immediately overridden by the spike factory text as they are unlocked at the same time, and then finally is one of the most wild bits of unused text I think I've ever seen while making Lost Bits videos. Now I've certainly learned my lesson in my Hello Neighbor video, so I'm not even going to bother reading this one out as to not get this video age restricted, and I'll censor it a bit, but yeah. Not sure exactly what the context of this text string is, but this is apparently left over unused here in BTD4. Wild. Now moving on to the last game of this video, we got Bloons TD5. More specifically, first the original Flash version of it. And this game actually has quite a few unused graphics to go over, so let's jump on in. For starters, we have unused splashing animations for the pontoon and pontoon pro spaces for when a tower would be placed on each, and similarly there are unused idle animations for the regular as well as pro version of the portable lake units. Next, there's an unused animation for the aircraft carrier tower where three mini planes can be seen taking off. Now oddly enough is that this animation was apparently seen in the game for almost 4 years until an update in 2015 where it was disabled. And similarly there are also unused animations for the mini planes, the monkey ace and many of its upgrades as well as the sniper monkey's supply drop aircraft meant for them taking off when placed as well as landing back down presumably when they'd get sold. Then next are unused graphics left over of the Turbo Charge and Turbo Glaver upgrades for the Boomerang Thrower Monkey. Now these were eventually implemented in the deluxe version of the game, but yeah, for whatever reason, despite being in the files, these never ended up getting implemented in the base game, and just the graphics for the Bionic Boomer were used for both instead. In earlier updates of BTD5, there were leftover unused graphics of what looks like early versions of a few of the game's tracks, Clock, Archipelago, as well as Monkey Lane, the earliest of which appears to be Archipelago as it's missing several details that were added in the final version. There were also full waving animations of the flags seen in the castle track which go unused, unused quest reward icons featuring units only seen in the deluxe version so it makes sense why they weren't used here, then there's an early animation of the Broken Heart that's seen when losing lives in the Protect Monkey Town mission, as well as a scrapped graphic for an equally scrapped achievement in the game that was called Otherworldly. Now this achievement would require the player to complete 365 daily challenges consecutively. Yeah, you heard that right. You would have to play this game and complete a daily challenge for an entire year without missing a single day to get this. 
This would have obviously been absolutely brutal to obtain, and apparently, due to popular demand from the game's community, this achievement was removed from the game in a 2012 update. Next, older versions of BTD5 actually had various early UI graphics left over unused. These include an early logo, main menu, main menu background, a bottom status bar, side panel graphics, graphics for a profile menu in three different colors, which was something that never ended up getting implemented in the game. There is an unused vignette graphic, as well as several early menus for everything from selecting a game mode, buying power-ups, seemingly an early menu for the achievements, looking at all the tower details, and more. And you might also notice that some of these have some placeholder text on them just saying blah 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 a whole bunch of times. These early graphics were eventually removed from the game over time via updates, but interestingly, they were all actually still left over in the deluxe version of BTD5. Now next up, several graphics were actually added to BTD5 in a 2015 update, with the catch being that they didn't actually end up being used anywhere. These include various graphics from the deluxe version, such as for both the Monkey Engineer and Bloon Chipper, which not only had their graphics added, but also some coding too. There's the special agents that never got implemented in the base game, as well as the Blue Aura Wrench Cursor that was part of the Overclock ability in Deluxe. Then other graphics that were added but never implemented include earlier graphics for the Bloon Bush, as well as for quite a few towers that never ended up being used. There were unused graphics for the Beekeeper, as well as some of its upgrades that were seen in BTD4, a monkey sidekick, bunch of monkeys, which is seen as a pile of dart monkeys, and it's thought that this was an early version of the Super Monkey Fan Club. There's a Venus flytrap unit that is giving me some serious Plants vs. Zombies vibes, and apparently this plant was also planned to appear in Bloon's Monkey City, where it too never ended up making the cut. And finally, there's this spider tower that although never made it to BTD5, it was eventually repurposed to appear with some red stripes on Halloween in Bloon's Monkey City. Now there were also various unused graphics of projectiles that were added, and these include animations of a spike ball and spike mine rolling, a big Bertha bomb dropping as part of the Mortar Monkey's The Big One upgrade, a signal flare also believed to be for the Mortar Tower, a web projectile likely for the spider unit we went over earlier, a flaming bomb for the monkey buccaneer, a simple grenade graphic, an earlier animated version of the trail effect left by the super monkey storm, an unused graphic for the pro version of the super monkey storm, and finally graphics for a watermelon, seeds, snowballs, and banana peels, all of which were seen in the deluxe version, but not here. And I hope you aren't tired of unused graphics as we got a few more to go over. Next are graphics associated with a scrapped tactics mechanic. This big graphic was apparently hidden off screen in earlier versions of the game before it was ultimately removed, and due to this smaller graphic resembling the special ability button seen in the game being referred to as a tactics button, it's likely that tactics were eventually reworked into special abilities. And finally, much like the Monkey Engineer graphics from BTD5 Deluxe that we went over earlier, there's also the unit's balloon trap object and associated graphics and sucking animation which remain left over unused too. And this trap actually has enough functionality left over for it to be restored in the game as seen here where it can suck up up to 250 balloons. And now last up for the Flash version of BTD5, we actually got quite a few bits of unused text here as well. First up, we have placeholder descriptions for each of the game's difficulties and other game modes. Easy would call the player a total noob. Normal would be for those bored of the easy difficulty. Hard was apparently for epic leet gamers. The sandbox description feels almost passive aggressive. Deflation is just the sound of deflation. And finally, the apocalypse one cranks things up in the intimidation department. Then next up we got unused description text for the Wizard Lord, and this isn't ever normally seen since you don't ever select this unit from the tower menu, and it's only automatically placed in the special mission where it's seen. Or should I say was seen, since as of April 2022, the special missions became unplayable in the Flash version. So I guess this Wizard Lord unit is now a lost bit itself as it can no longer be normally accessed. And finally, the unused text fans out there can rejoice even more as we got a whole bunch more placeholder text here as well. 
Highlights here include early name strings for several tracks, Lolograde, which is thought to be a placeholder name for a game mode, Super Irate Glaive Moab Mauling Bomb, some blah blah blahs, a placeholder blurb for unlocking something featuring some more blahs, uh, yeah, 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 meant as a placeholder for reaching a new rank, more text, a placeholder description for a quest, some text times four, which was apparently a placeholder for premium item descriptions, and finally, probably the best one, this one of just the devs mashing the keyboard for a bit. Now that's about it for the original Flash version, so now let's move on to the mobile release of the game, which actually has a few unique unused graphics. First, we have a whole set of UI graphics in green and blue listed as Map Editor UI. Simply based on the name, it's very likely that these were used by the developers when making maps for this game, and since no publicly released map editor exists for the mobile version, these never get normally seen. Then next, there's also an unused debug font left over in the game in both a higher resolution as well as a lower one. But what I think is the most interesting thing for the mobile release here are two tracks that never got implemented. Well, more like one and a half tracks. First, there's River, and despite this track being mentioned as something that would be added in one of the game's updates, it never ended up seeing the light of day. And for whatever reason, the Workshop track would end up taking its place instead. Now the second track here did end up getting added to the game, but in a completely different style than was originally intended. Before being released as desert-themed Roswell, named after the New Mexico City where absolutely nothing happened in the late 40s, this track was originally going to be called Artful Dodgers, and as you can see here, it would look way different. Although the original design certainly had more color, and we can see it had the exact same planned path for the balloons, this uh, isn't exactly easy on the eyes. And although this colorful design never ended up added here, something kind of similar was eventually seen in the Cubism track in BTD6. Then, as far as unused text stuff goes, the mobile version contains references to premium upgrades, which were never implemented in the mobile version, so these suggest that there might have originally been at least some plans to introduce them here. And then next, several internal track names reveal what appears to be their early names. This includes Grotto for the North Pole track, Stream for Snake River, Go With The Flow for Switch, Radioactive for the Bluntonium Lab, and more. And now lastly for this video, I've made references to it a bunch of times here, so let's finally check out the deluxe version of Bloons TD5, which unfortunately met its end in 2014 with no legal way to play it now unless you bought it back in the day before it was shelved. This version of BTD5 has leftover unused animations of electricity that would run along the power lines in the railway track track, and also there's this graphic that's normally unseen as it's hidden off screen next to the game's profile info button. And then last up, there's also a pair of unused or normally unseen graphics from the Flash version of BTD5 left over here in the Deluxe version. First, we have a graphic for the Daily Challenges, which due to the Deluxe version's offline-only content was replaced by Random Challenges. And then hidden off-screen in the main menu is the Newsboard, that was seen for showcasing various different events back in the Flash release of the game. And my friends, we'll leave it there for now, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back to the channel in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for popping by today, and I will see you in a bit.